For as long as humans have been alive, one of the biggest mysteries to us has been death. Mortality and the questions surrounding it have troubled philosophers, scientists, kings, queens, peasants, pretty much anyone you can think of since the beginning of time. For most, death and what it could potentially encompass is very scary. The fear of death is one of the most common fears in the world, and it's understandable why we're all so scared of it. It's this inevitable thing that regardless of how much we speculate or investigate, can't figure out how it works or what happens after it's taken place. This is why one of the biggest questions that has surrounded mortality is how we can avoid it. Religion, pop culture, world leaders, this is talked about all the time. If you think about it, practically everything we do as a society is for the overarching super objective of prolonging life and avoiding death. But what if we could avoid it entirely? What if we never truly had to die? What if we could pause the clock of life and start it back up again whenever we felt like it? Well, that's the whole idea behind potentially freezing humans in time. From Han Solo to Captain America, the idea of freezing oneself and then returning as you were at a later time has entered the mainstream in our pop culture. Now, I should specify that we aren't just talking about walking into your fridge freezer and waiting there until you're frozen. I'm specifically referencing the action of cryonically freezing someone. It sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi novel, and it kind of is, but some people believe that this could be possible. What would that mean for humans if we could get cryonically frozen and then brought back to life? How would society function if everyone just started hitting the snooze button on their lives? Time to take a look at what life would be like if humans could be frozen in time. So first things first, let's look at what it means to be cryonically frozen and then the whole process associated with that. Dennis Kowalowski is the president of the cryonics institution and he's quoted saying, most cryonicists, there's two things you'll find. We're sci-fi lovers, obviously, we're also optimists. He goes on to admit that cryonically freezing someone and bringing them back to life is 100% not possible today, but also says that we're not at the zenith of all of our knowledge right now and we certainly have more to learn and to discover in the future. So right now, it's not possible to bring somebody back, but some experts who study it are often optimistic that it could potentially happen in the future. So far, the cryonical process has only taken place with bodies that have already been presumed dead. Due to our current technology and the fact that we can't bring anyone back yet, to test it out on a living person would be considered murder. I'm going to quote an article by Science That Matters written by Kate Golombowski in regards to the procedure taking place on a body after it's been declared dead. She writes, A medical team cools the body with ice water and keeps the body's tissues oxygenated using CPR and oxygen masks. The ice-cold body is put in a hermetically sealed container and flown to the cryonics facility. At the cryonics facility, the team puts the body on a machine similar to a heart-lung bypass, circulating the blood and maintaining oxygenation. They pump in a vitrification solution that works like antifreeze to keep the body's tissues from turning to ice crystals in hopes of minimizing structural damage. Then, they slowly cool the body to negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit in a a liquid nitrogen vapor chamber. Once it's cold enough, the body is transferred to a thermos-like tank of liquid nitrogen where it'll stay for the foreseeable future. So that's the process of cryonically freezing someone. I suppose based on that, one could argue that we can already freeze humans in time because, well, we're doing it right now. The whole idea why some people want to get this done is so that when we have the technology to reanimate these bodies with life, then they'll come back to life. But like Dennis said earlier, we currently don't have that capability. That capability, though, is pretty key. Just freezing someone in a specific sort of tank doesn't really mean anything at all unless we can bring them back to life. Figuring out how to do this, though, is probably going to take some time. It all boils down to what life is. What is that magical force that makes our bodies go and operate but doesn't exist in some other things? Why is it that, even though we've perfectly preserved someone's body, that they have all the necessary parts to go and function as you or I do, that they just simply can't? What do we need? to add to this formula to give them life again. Until we figure out this answer, freezing humans in time will be an impossibility. However, this video isn't titled, Can We Freeze Humans in Time? It's titled, What If We Can? So, for the remainder of the video, I'm going to assume that we can do this, that we figure out the formula. We know what life is now and are capable of putting said life back into perfectly preserved human bodies and effectively bringing them back to life in the future. Well, if we can do that, then there won't be anything stopping us from 
doing what I was suggesting at the beginning of this video and putting a pause on her life. If I can assuredly come back to life with no consequences, then why do I need to wait until I'm dead to freeze myself? Let me just do it whenever I'm feeling like it. Maybe I'm going through a rough patch in my life and just want to escape. Boom. Let me freeze myself and come back in a hundred years and start over again. In fact, I can see the commercials now. Life got you down? Well, let's turn that around by going to the future. Going to the future, or at least freezing yourself and waking up in the future, could become the whole new craze. Heck, maybe you could even vacation there. Like, Hey guys, thanks for all the wedding gifts. For our honeymoon, me and the missus will actually be heading to the year 3000, so see you never. All right, maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, but if freezing yourself in time and being able to be woken back up in the future got to a point where it was so common, then I don't see why this couldn't happen. This would obviously take a really long time though. Something like this would, at least for the first little while in its existence, be reserved for the super wealthy. In the first years of development, I can't really imagine an average Joe freezing themselves and coming back to life 50 years in the future. As of right now, it costs almost 30 grand to get frozen, and we don't even have the technology to bring you back yet, so that could be a complete waste of money. The one thing that's super interesting about this whole thing, though, is that if we're capable of freezing people and bringing them back, well, is there actually any point in doing it at all then? Think about it. If we can remanufacture life, then theoretically, we should be immortal now. If you ever die, then we can just pump the life back into you and you should be fine now. The current method of freezing someone has their body put into negative 300 degrees Fahrenheit. That's gonna kill a person. Then we would reanimate them hundreds of years in the future and they can live out the rest of their life in said future. But this whole process assumes that someone's life is finite. Why would our life ever need to be finite if we can bring someone back to life? If we can do that, then we should be able to just keep repairing our bodies from natural decay and therefore live forever. And if we can live forever, then why would we ever need to get frozen and dethawed in the future? We live forever now, so eventually we'll get to the future and we will have lived our life up until that point as well. I suppose one can make an argument for being able to fast track the whole process, but I think most people would want to live through it if they could. All of this to say that I think if humans could be frozen in time and reanimated later, then it actually becomes irrelevant to free someone in time in the first place. Maybe I'm generalizing it a bit too much, and there are specific instances where using this capability would be important, but large in part, I don't see it being that helpful. Now, one thing I will say is that even though we're currently freezing people, many people don't think it's actually effective right now. Shannon Tessier, a cryobiologist from Harvard, has said, there is absolutely no current way, no proven scientific way, to actually freeze a whole human down to that temperature without completely destroying, and I mean obliterating, the tissue. The tissue is completely obliterated, the cell membrane is completely destroyed. So there's actually no proof that you're preserving anything, and that's because the science is just not there yet. So basically, this well-regarded cryobiologist is saying that this negative 320 degree freeze is a waste of 30 grand. If we were ever able to make it though, so we could actually preserve the tissue perfectly, then that does change things. Things. If we can preserve the tissue perfectly, but don't have a way to bring life back yet, then freezing yourself does seem like the best option. Right now, it looks like those that are frozen won't ever be able to come back. But if we are preserved perfectly, then maybe there is a chance. Maybe those with terminal illnesses could be frozen and then brought back to life when we have the technology to do so, and also the technology to cure their terminal disease. Right now, the idea of freezing someone in time is a great sci-fi premise and really cool to think about, but we just don't have the proper tech to get it done. If we can learn how to perfectly preserve someone, then I think we should all get frozen if possible. And then if we can finally learn how to actually reanimate said bodies, then we probably won't need to freeze ourselves in the first place ever again. But let me know in the comments down below what you think about this whole question. Are you ready to get frozen if you can? Also, I didn't even touch on this, but do you think there are any major morality questions that come into play with this whole thing? Or is it all okay in your mind? Let me know in the comments. Also, please hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. I've been your host, Nicholas Playlog, and I'll catch you next time.